sweet, sweet souls, welcome back. I hope that you are good and that you've had a good few days. So what we're going to do today is a love prediction. We're going to just work with you, your energy. And if you want to think about a specific person, you can put that into the deck you are most drawn to. Uh, but I just want to focus on you all today. We just put some energy back into you and make it really, really high vibration. So this is deck number one and this is deck number two. And as I'm showing you these decks, I'm hearing very, very clearly, just pausing it, I've got two messages for you actually, I'm hearing really, really clearly the number 222. So for those of you that don't work with numerology um, or haven't got a clue what 222 means, if you start seeing it around you, so you might see it on car regs, you might see it on takeaway menus, you might see it on utility bills, that 222 often symbolises either a returning of someone, it, it, it can be a very strong twin flame relationship, it can be a higher vibrational soulmate relationship, it can be a returning of a specific person, or if you're single and you're wanting someone new, that 222 is symbolising the alignment of you and your energies and someone else. So when you see the 222s flagging up around you, remember that your energy is aligning with that love that you're thinking of or that you want. So whatever's in your mind when you see that 222, it really will symbolize that positive, positive prediction for you. So remember that. And the second thing um, is, as I'm going into your energies, before I've even got you to pick the deck, I'm hearing the, the, the old song, Centerfold. It was a really, really retro song, and I only remember the um, Scar Punk version by Sponge. I don't even know if the original has a, a scar, what the original was, um, actually, but it's talking, if I can remember the lyrics right, um, talking about how your angel is a centerfold. So again, this is really showing that those of you out there watching this for this love prediction, it's really aligning into your favour, and that's before we've even looked at the cards. So both those messages, also uh, the song centerfold might mean something specific to one of you, um, so if you've listened to that song over the years and it makes you think of, of, of I don't know, Mark or Justin or Simon, you know, that, that song is there for you. Okay, let's go. Deck number one, deck number two. So both of these are Liminal 11 decks. Uh, this one is, I love this deck. This is the White Newman Sacred Animal Tarot, where it's very much with the Newmans. And then you also have deck number two, which is the Cosmic Slumber Tarot. Both really, really beautiful decks. Liminal 11 is a very, very great shop. Um, love them. Number one, number two. Let's go. Picture deck. Got it? One, two, okay. Number one. I'm going to have a quick sip of my massive cup of coffee. Because whatever time of day you are watching this, for me, it is very early hours of the morning. <laughs> okay, let's go. So just going to step into all of you guys energy so just really feeling that energy between you all and um, that's how collective readings work don't know if anyone's ever explained that to you um we go into all your energy we being me and my guides and we pull out that strongest mutual energy between you all that's how a collective reading will work okay i'm not going to ask you to think about anyone specifically i just want to focus on your energy and let's go. So can you tell me a love prediction for everyone watching with deck number one? What is their love prediction for the future? Now this deck might actually split into two parts. Sometimes that happens uh, because if your mutual energy is wavering into two different bits, you'll have kind of two readings in one deck. So let's see what we get. What is the love prediction for deck number one? Yeah. Looks like it is splitting a little bit. So we'll do it like this, just in case. Two, three. Four. Let's just get one more. Very interesting, interesting reads going on here. I've never seen that card before. It's pretty cool, isn't it? Right, let's go. So where you, what's happening at the moment? Now, it looks like you guys have left a situation behind or you're a little bit unsure if you should be leaving a situation behind or you've been hurt and betrayed and this is where the deck is splitting a little bit. So whatever your individual circumstances are, there has been a bit of a parting of ways, Spirit's saying. 
that you might be feeling a little bit betrayed, that someone's really, really let you down. And now you're not really sure what you should be doing. And Spirit really, really clearly saying to you, dancing on ice. So at the moment you're kind of skating around, you're not really sure what's going on, what you're meant to be doing, what pathway you are meant to be taking. Now with the Ten of Swords, this is kind of like you feeling stabbed in the back, they run off into the sunset if you're thinking about a specific person or someone, a specific someone, or just in your past that you have been extremely hurt by people. Now with the Devil coming up next to the Ten of Swords, it has been this chained to the past, chained to feelings that have been a little bit more bitter, a little bit more painful, a little bit more hard in your energy. So where you are at the moment, you have this very, very heavy feeling around you. Um, now, the devil card is often the dark side of the lovers. Now, those of you that read tarot, you know the lovers is beautiful, it's all about relationships, sometimes it can be about cheating. But for this reading, the lovers would be all this beautiful energy. The devil is the darker side. He speaks of the, the kind of addiction energy where you really want the rush, you really want to speak to someone, you really want the communication and um, the passionate energy between you both that keeps pulling you back. Sometimes it's that toxicity, it can be codependency, all those more heavier energies going on with the devil. And it's almost like you're trying to break out of this cycle. Maybe you're moving forward and then your mind keeps pulling you back. Spirit is saying to me really clearly with the, these two cards that actually you can find that you're further forward in this situation and you're you you more you you've stepped away from the past more than what you think you have but sometimes the memories are what pull you back so you'll hear a specific song or someone will say something and it really kind of goes back to this energy here this love it th th this kind of I want to hear I want to I don't know if I can break out of this cycle I don't know how to step myself forward okay so that's what these two cards are symbolizing now, as we're moving forward, as we step into this energy, we have the nine of wands and the two of cups. So no matter where it's been and how heavy it has been, there is still a love, okay? There is still love. You're still a great believer in love. Um, and I'm hearing that centerfold song as well. So there's a straight, still a massive, massive belief in love and how it is real, how it's a real deal. Um, beautiful connections going on with you. With the nine of wands, you're feeling this very heavy energy. It's like... You've been, you're feeling, again, with these two cards over here, you've been feeling like you've been battling an endless battle. Um, but you do still believe in love. You do still believe that things have a way of coming back round if they are meant to or in finding someone new, depending, again, deck splitting, or if you're after someone new or talking about the other person. So you've, you've had this heavy energy around you. Um, it's like the candles kind of burn to both ends. You feel very sad, very heavy, um, over it all, but you still haven't lost faith. And I think that's really, really important to say to you, that you do still believe in love. Um, and love really does fix a lot of wounds, you know, love for self also. Let's not just talk about love for other people, let's talk about love for self. Um, you know, people will bang on about how it's important to love yourself and, and do this kind of healing work. But the essence of love um, is a massive, massive healer. So whether it's love for someone else or love for yourself, there is love heals all spirit saying really clearly love heals all so you might be feeling wounded you might be feeling like a bit of a wounded soldier that you've been fighting this kind of battle but love prevails and i think that's the song um and i'm hearing really clearly this was a this was from a musical love never dies i think it was from phantom of the opera 2 which was a terrible film i tried to watch it once and i was like what have you done to phantom of the opera and um, but yeah uh, love never dies okay so if you're thinking about a specific person very important message there that love never dies if you're thinking about moving forward you still have great hope and belief in love and that will bring forward you somebody new okay where are we going now so again, deck kind of splitting. Ace of Wands, we have a new passionate beginning. So if you are after somebody new, this is your indicator that yes, this will happen. There is someone new. Um, you will have it intense chemistry. And actually, to be fair, if you're thinking of a specific person, this is saying that there is a new beginning with that specific person too. 
So you've got between you guys, how the deck split between you both, you've got an intense chemistry. You have an extreme magnetism. And if you're thinking about someone from the past, you can definitely see that with the devil card. It's intense, it's strong, it's passionate. But this is really symbolising a new beginning. So where all this crappy, icky, icky, sticky muckiness over here has been, it's like you're taking a step forward from that now and really moving towards a brighter future. There is a very, um, uh, <laughs> yeah, okay. There's a very sexual connotation with this card, Spirit saying to me, um, the passion, the sexual energy, the chemistry, new beginning. So whether it's with someone new or a person returning to you. Now the reason why I say a person returning to you is how this deck splits again. So, for some of you guys, you've got the memories of the past returning, okay? Past energy coming back. Six page of uh sorry, six of cups, eight of wands. Past energy returning to new beginnings. So if you are thinking of a specific person that you do have this painful energy where you have been hurt, the devil energy, the, the heavier energy, that is returning to you. So if you are wondering about a specific person, that is there. And if you are not wondering about a specific person and are looking for someone new, we have the Page of Swords and the Eight of Wands as well. So the Page of Swords will talk about meeting someone, uh, potentially through the internet. It is communication. And even with your someone from the past, there is communication coming forward. If you're online dating, this could potentially be where you meet your new person. You do meet them online. You meet them on the wig, 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 world wide web, world wide web couldn't get my words out there and these all lead to these passionate new beginnings so depending on if you were thinking of someone else or if you were thinking of someone new the important message is here is love prevails love heals and love never dies okay so whether you're someone from the past if you are thinking of someone from the past that is a returning and if you're looking for someone from the new there is a new relationship blossoming potentially through the internet so you really did split your energies in deck number one, one way and the other way. Um, I'm just going to pull, let's just pull three cards overall for the, just a, a final read, final, a final bit. Let's see what comes up for you both, the, how the deck split. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so that kind of speaks for it. All. So you have the lovers, the lighter side of the devil card, you have the two of pentacles and you have the nine of cups, okay? So lovers speaking for itself, this is a relationship, this is a connection, this is a bond, this is a love. The two of pentacles, what I like about this deck for this card, it really does have that duality theme. So right and wrong, good and bad, light and dark, yin and yang, you know, all of that and this two of pentacles energy. So this would be a masculine and feminine. We're never, I can't get my words out today. It's because spirit talk 50,000 miles an hour in my ear and then I have to try and communicate it to you while I was talking to you at the same time. Remember, what was we going to remember then? I've forgotten. <laughs> remember um, your energies. Okay, so your light and dark, your good and bad, your balancing of one another. This is a card of you two balancing each other out. So it could be that perhaps they've been through the shadow side um, as well. You know, you've been balancing your energies. Never sexually orientated, gender specific. That's what I was going to say. I couldn't remember. Thank you. OK, so you have this balancing energy going on between you guys. So like you balance each other out. And with the nine of cups coming up the end, this is your wishes coming true. So even if you've been in this heavier place with this heavier energy and you haven't really known how to place it, what to do with it, do know that keeping your faith, and believing in love, it sounds so beautiful, it sounds like a proper fairy tale, doesn't it? Will bring you the outcome that you want, the Nine of Cups. And we've got the fish on here, you know, the fish in Druidry. I am a Druid, for those of you that don't know, that have just tapped in, tuned in, turned on. You also, you have the Druidry, and you have also the, the cross in the middle for faith. The, the salmon in Druidry it always stands for wisdom, you know, the, the ancient salmon, how he, he swam down the path, and stories of Taliesin and things like that, but that's a whole nother ball game. So you have this power energy coming up from the wisdom that you've learned and from keeping your faith, your dreams will manifest into your reality. And if you want a manifesting plan, give me a shout. If you want us to do some ancient druidry magic uh, to bring into you your pathway that you deserve, desire and want, 
you can give me a shout as well. I do do ceremonies. I haven't linked them on the website yet um, because it is very individual, depending on where you are and what you need and what spirits, uh, what your spirits, your guides, um, my guides, your guides, ancestors, what they all say is more important for you uh, to bring it into your reality. But it's there. So outcome is positive. A funnel of prediction number one. Interesting how the deck split into two. As soon as I started, I knew that was going to happen. That's uh, no uh, shocker really, is it? But <laughs> I just felt, I was like, right, this deck's going to split into two. So let's have just have a bit of a spruce. Uh Where are all my magic sprays? I bet they're not even in where I thought they'd be in. Oh, there is one. What have we got? So it's just... Coming my coffee. Nobody wants to drink essential oils. Um, frankincense. If you ever haven't made frankincense water, then I do recommend that. But I wouldn't recommend spraying it into your pot. A bit nasty. Ugh. Right, let's go. So, my loves, deck number two. Cosmic Slumber Tarot. Let's see what your love prediction is. So I'm just going into your energies today rather than thinking of anyone specific. Um, we'll see what comes up, see what spirits say, see what the cards say, and take it from there. So really clearly I'm hearing uh, from, this is a higher dimensional guide, uh, so this is likely to be an angel. The, the frequency coming in um, is likely to be an angel. Um, and they're saying, they're saying progressing slowly, sweetheart, taking time, those the biggest endeavours for you to enhance your dreams. There's a big smile coming forward with that and a very, very kind of light, floaty energy. It's definitely an angelic presence coming into deck number two. So let's see. What do, what is the love prediction for deck number two? Love prediction. So the first card jumping out um, is Temperance. I'll tell you about that in a second. I'm just going to get five. Love prediction for deck number two. That was a hand slip. There was about five there, by the way. If you're, if you're like, well, why should I put it back in the deck? Four. Three. That's still a hand slip. More over there. Just one more, please. Best have both of them. Ooh, interesting. Go tower. We got a tower. Okay. So, temperance. Give me a tower over temperance any day. Okay. So let's talk about these two cards. Temperance. When we're looking at a love prediction, this would come up as potentially my least favourite card in the tarot deck. And everyone's like, why do you not like temperance? Why do you have an, a beef with temperance? Well, and, and, and I don't mean offence to the cards, but it's a card of things taking time. It's a card of balance. It's a card of transforming. It's a card of alchemy, which is absolutely beautiful, but it's a card of, hold on a second, you've got to be a little bit patient. Now, with the tower flagging up at the end, a tower symbolises things collapsing all around you and it has to be rebuilt. So you can have big T towers, which would be things like divorces, breakups, um, big, big arguments, or you can have little tea towers where someone annoys you, uh, potentially they, they kind of distance themselves from you, yada, yada, yada. So you have big tea towers, little tea towers. The other card that I want to talk about before I read it all together for you is the magician. So the magician is talking about energy aligning around you. So let's put these three cards together. You've pulled out of six cards, you pulled three major arcanas. These are the majors. These are the big situations going on around you. These are the important things. The minors give us more details. The majors tell us what we really specifically need to know. And these will give us more details, okay? So towers have hit. Things have fallen down around you. And if they haven't at the moment, if they haven't, if that hasn't happened in a past energy, hold your breath. This is going to be a present energy, okay? So 
things are going to, if they haven't just or are about to, haven't just fallen down around you, this means that things are going to start falling at the wayside. Now, the reason why this is happening is because it's cutting away that which no longer serves you. So it could be that you've been stuck in a cycle, you've been stuck in a loop, you haven't really known what you're doing, where it's going, and um, maybe it's a loop of singleton, singletonness, maybe it's a loop of a specific person, whatever way, you feel like you've been stuck in a cycle. So this tower is coming to hit and it, it, it might be a little bit of a, um, I mean, you're prepared now because I, I told you, there might be a little bit of an ouchy moment. So you do need to just be a little bit prepared for that. Now, the reason why this is happening, why this tower is going to hit, well, you've been asking the universe to manifest what you want. Okay. Um, now, sometimes towers have a very funny way of going around it. It could be that this tower happens, this ouchy moment will happen, um, and it will be what you're asking for is going to be rebuilt in a different way, or perhaps in the way that you have been asking. But if you've been stuck in this cycle and pressing this repeat, 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 in the words of Dua Lipa, eat, sleep, and breathe it, rehearse, and repeat it. If you've been going in this cycle, in this loop, this tower is hitting for that loop to break. OK, so it's the energy with these two cards is transforming around you. It's changing. So the tower has to hit for it to be rebuilt. So it's going to actually be a more positive tower in the longer term. OK, your energy over here. So mag magician, everything that you've been asking for is coming into alignment. Temperance, it's transforming. So what you've been asking for, the loop that you've been going around, it is now transforming so that you can manifest, you can bring in what it is that you desire. And that is what's happening. So your prediction, first and foremost, is this, this tower. If it hasn't just hit, it, it, it might be hitting in the very near future. OK, and that will transform the energy around you, which is what you've been asking for. <clears throat> Sorry, where are we going from there? what happens next so then we we start to kind of think about what we want where what pathway do you want to go down like i said you've been going around in this loop in this bit of a cycle and um, haven't really known what way to progress but this is this kind of sitting still for a little while waiting to see where it all ends up let the towers fall let it give you a bit of settling time thinking it all through and then creating action so it's like this towers are hitting, things are hitting and happening around you. So you can work out what pathway you want to go down. You're going to make that movement then towards what you want. And with the Queen of Cups coming at the end, this is saying that, OK, everything's going to fall apart, but you'll make the movement then to what you want. So you'll get what you want, but everything has to kind of collapse a little bit around you first. Essentially, that's what that means. So the Queen of Cups, let's talk about her. Um, if you're asking about spiritual things as well, she is the psychic, she is the magician, she is the witch, she is your energies all aligning, okay? Um, she's a creative person. If you look at star signs, I mean, I don't use major arcanas for star signs because there's so much more underneath it. Um, sorry, I don't use uh, court cards for the, the star signs because there's so much more depth than just saying, well, it's a Pisces, a Cancer or a... Uh, Scorpio, okay? So more depth to that, but it's this emotional beginning, okay? Moving towards a more emotional manifestation. So if someone's been avoiding you and not giving you contact, that is an emotional manifestation to bring in your desires. If you don't know what you want to do, your emotions are gonna lead the way in the pathway that you want to go down. The first thing that's got to happen is it has to collapse, but it collapses more into your favor so that you can bring in what it is that you want. So, in times of stagnancy, with my least favourite card, in times of stagnancy, this is when you will get your biggest epiphanies. Um, and with that, I cannot remember who sang this, uh, but the song that says, I'll be watching, I'll be waiting in the shadows. So if you're asking about a specific person, that is a message from that. If you're asking about where you're going, this is you watching and waiting for things to move into your favour. So it's going to feel a bit slow it's going to feel like not much is happening tower's going to hit and then you're going to go back to this oh what do i want but that time of stagnancy is where the transformations are happening around you so when the tower hits think about what you want manifest it and if you want a ceremony i was just saying um on, on deck number one if you want us to do some magic some druid magic we can if you want a manifesting plan we can do that as well 
Um, but do have a think about what it is that you want. And then this card, once that tower hits and it goes a bit quiet, you can then bring into your, your world what it is that you want. And you've got the, all the tools, gifts, spiritual abilities to do that. So you can bring it to you. Um, it's just that everything's got to go a little bit peat on first with the tower. And that is deck number two. So have a think about what you want, deck number two. Because you can bring it. You can bring it to your reality. It's just that it's got to fall apart first a little bit. Um, and with that as well, just to finish off the reading, and that's really, really beautiful way to finish it off. Um, I actually got two songs then. Two songs. I got My Immortal uh, by Evanescence. And I also got the other Evanescence. Other Evanescence. Uh, other evanescence song bring me to life um and that bring me to life song actually really does make me think of the tower like it has to collapse around her for her to kind of have that fresh start to start again and that is that number two so you can bring to you what you want have a think about what it is that you just what you want what do you want and bring that bring that all right guys that's that number two if you need me drop me a message Oh my god, I cannot talk today. Drop me a message, mrlovetarot at gmail.com. Love you all. Ciao, Bellas.